This start. conference will now be recorded. Hey, uh, thanks everyone once again for joining. So, once again, for those who don't know me, or this is the first time we are interacting, my name is Adam and I'm part of Fizwa Technologies. And uh, what is it we are going to learn today? So, you've been hearing a lot about Terraform, and I know Terraform is used to create infrastructure, right? So from that way, I want to give you one of a real-time example on what's been done in the organizations a lot. So in that way, we'll try to understand uh, what is the need of creating an image or what we generally call it as a golden image in AWS, okay? And for creating it, uh, one of the popular tool that is there in the market is Packer. So that way, for those who have not used as you start getting involved more into DevOps operations or cloud operations or you know more towards the cloud, you would be eventually ending up using this at some point of time. So that way, we'll try to understand what is this Packer? How are we going to create an image using Packer? And then eventually, how Terraform can be used to invoke your Packer, okay? So that's how entirely the configurations will be managed of your infrastructure using Terraform. And in that, uh, in this session, I'll be majorly focusing towards Packer and how does Terraform can be invoked along with Packer in this first session. And tomorrow, we'll talk about a couple of more things on Terraform along with GitOps. Okay, so that's the part two. So to get started, now, when we say an organization, right, and especially I'm considering that all of us would have been moved to some cloud service provider like AWS or Azure, preferably I would take it as AWS. Now what happens is, in an organization, for a different kind of activities, once again, there would be a developer or a QA person, or a support engineer or an administrator. Now, for each one of them, you need a specific machine in which the applications or the services that you are going to run will be different, okay? So this is where now, in an organization, it is not that always, if you want to do some work, you will be going to the AWS launch instance and use the default AMI, which is available, okay? Now, basically all those things will happen only for your practicing. But in real time, whether I'm going to do my development work or testing or deployment or support, I would need a machine which has certain, you know, configurations already done based on the need. So this is when, now, instead of we just using the standard or regular images available in the cloud, like what we call it as the AMI, so you would be just, you know, basically picking up a Ubuntu-based AMI or a CentOS-based or a Red Hat-based. Now, instead of that, in an organization, you would be using a AMI, which has certain, you know, files or configurations done to suit your development or QA need. So from that way, we need to ensure that there is an image which is created. Now generally, the image which is what we are going to use for various environment, it's what we call it as a golden image. Now typically this word is referred to only the production grade image, but eventually a golden image in AWS is all about a final image using which you are going to create a machine which is good enough for you to do your production kind of work, okay? So that's when we need to ensure that images are created or in general, ensure that there is one standard image which we call it as golden image. Now, why do we have to create a golden image, okay? Now, the first problem, like I said, if we do not have a standard image everyone will be creating a machine 
out of different base images or different general images which is available in AWS. Now, because of that, what will happen? Everyone has to spend a lot of time in configuring or there might be some mismatch in the configuration. So everyone will not be following a standard. And then what happens is, especially when you go to production, if you are not using a latest version of a package, then you would be getting into some issue later. So that's where in order to make sure all the, you know, whoever is working within an organization, they should always be following a standard where they will always be using a latest version of the application or services. So for that, we need to make sure that whenever there is a need, we would be generating an image which has all the latest version of packages or files or the services that is needed for your day-to-day -day work. In that way, a golden image is basically a image in AWS where it is having all the latest configurations suiting your work. Okay, so that's the basic necessity of creating an image. So how do you can create an image? So that's the next question that will come. Okay, now in this way, when you say to create an image, there are a lot of similarities between Docker here, but again, don't try to compare the concept or the, uh, you know, the way how Docker works, but from the logic wise. So if you are going to create an image in Docker, what do you do? So basically you take a base image and you convert it into a runtime container or what we call it as temporary container. And then you put all the, you know, configurations into it. And out of that, you create your new image. In the same way, in AWS, now, if you have to create a golden image, first, you need to pick up a base image. So this could be depending on your organization, whatever the OS like Ubuntu or Red Hat. Now, from this base image, you first create a EC2 machine, okay? And in this machine, you need to basically go ahead, install all the packages or upgrade the packaging or, you know, version, whatever you need, or copy some specific files or folder into it or create some users. Ultimately, you configure this EC2 machine so that you have everything in this machine, which is what is the desired content. And from this machine, you can convert it into a golden image, which is nothing but another final AMI, which can be used by other people. Okay. So this is the general process that you're going to follow. But eventually, now, as in an organization, if you're going to, you know, work in a DevOps culture or taking care of cloud operations, there will be many environments like this, right? And it is not just only one project. So there will be many projects and many environments. So for all these things, very frequently, you need to make sure that the images are updated and you always have one of the latest version of the AMI. And that is where the automation of image is an important work in cloud ops or in managing the cloud. And that is where now Packer as a tool comes in. Okay. So if you understand now, Packer is basically an open source tool which is being given to us by HashiCorp. Okay. Now what we can do is whatever we just now saw, that is you take a base image and create a machine and do the steps inside that machine. And after that, convert that machine into a golden image. So instead of you doing all these steps manually, you can give these instructions to the tool called Packer and it will help us to automate. So this is where I was telling just like how you have Docker. So if you know the basics of Docker, so what do you do in Docker? So you write a file called as Docker file and you put all the instructions in it and then you execute and ultimately what is the result of it you will be getting a docker new image which has all the content or layers the same way we give all the details to packer and packer will be doing all the steps on the background so packer itself will take the base image create a new ec2 machine and 
configure that machine based on what you have told and then from that ec2 it will generate a golden image okay so that is how packer will be used to automate the process of generating a image in aws okay now since we are focusing more into cloud you can consider packer is mainly used for creating a machine image or a image in aws okay now why is it packer so popular because packer is not just meant only for aws okay and once again it's not meant only for cloud so using packer you can now build an image for aws or azure or also your traditional vms like you have vmware right so if you want to create an image for your vmware you can still use packer so that's the main advantage so packer supports clos platform okay so you can use packer to build image for a vm or for aws or for azure okay so that's way now to do all these things eventually you can have a single file wherein you can write some kind of syntax or code once again this is what we call it as code but eventually it is not a program it's just some kind of syntax so like how we have a docker file in which you are going to write some instructions in the same way now packer also needs one configuration file in which you are going to write some syntax and tell what is that you want to do that is basically create an image now in that using a single file we can generate images for multiple platform okay so that is one of the advantage and then since in devops we talk a lot about ci cd so before you do a deployment now if you need to specifically create a machine with the configurations needed then you can also use packer or the packer command as part of your ci cd so that you build your artifact and then you create a image out of it and then from that golden image you can create a machine and then deploy your application so that is where it is very easy for us to you know kind of add the packer command to our ci cd pipeline because it's a very simple command as we go through we will see there's hardly two commands that you need to know and since the input whatever that we need to give to packer is going to be using a single file now anything that you start writing as a file in devops we have to follow the continuous development process which is where you need to start versioning it so whenever you hear about this word called version you should be thinking about one of the popular tool called git for the client and you can use github or gitlab for your central server manager so that way you can store the packers configuration file into git repository and you can also create image and any point of time if you want to roll back to a previous version of the image you just take the old file and you can just rebuild the images so that is how popular will be i mean uh, packer will be very useful for us whether you are going to use a vm or whether you are going to create a machine image in aws or azure okay so now so what is packer going to do now you are going to write a file in which you are going to tell what is the base image needed and from that packer itself will create a machine and based on the steps whatever you have given it will configure the machine and then it is going to basically convert it into a golden image okay so now for all these things we are going to write a json file okay so packer typically uses a file of the format called json now when we say writing a json file packer basically has the json file divided into three components okay now the first component of your json file is called as variable so as you start writing any code right there will be a lot of values that you might have to reuse it or you might have to pass some values during your runtime execution like credentials or environment variable names 
now for all those things within the packer json you have a section called as variable section in which you will define those variables what you need okay and then there is another section called as builders section and this is the section which exactly tells how to build the image and this varies depending on what is the platform for which you are going to create the image suppose if you are creating an image for your aws then there is a specific builder for it if you are trying to create it against a hypervisor like vmware then there is a separate builder for it so now using a specific builder you are going to tell what is that image that you want to create okay and then finally there is another section which is called as provisioners now what is provisioners so once again if you compare this with terraform now just to give you a gist of terraform provisioners now in terraform after creating a machine you can go inside the machine and you can run some command or you can run a script or you can copy a file to it right the same way now whenever we are talking about creating an image it is not just that you take a base image and you convert it but inside that newly created machine which is going to get converted into an image what is that you want to run so that is what we call it as provisioners so this is exactly similar to your terraform provisioner now a provisioner is a section where what is that you want as a command or a script or a file that you want to copy inside that ec2 machine that you're going to create from which you will be converting it into a image okay so that way in the provisioner section you're going to tell those details now in fact if you want you can even call a ansible or a chef playbook through packer and configure that newly created machine so it's completely up to us where what is the base image you are going to take create a machine and whether you want you can go inside the machine and run a script or a command or copy a file or basically execute a configuration management tool like ansible on chef and configure the same thing automatically so for all those things you are going to use provisioners so these are the three blocks that you are going to have in your packer okay now with this basics let's try to see how we are going to install and run packer okay now you can download packer from this location however if you are interested to install a specific version of packer you can just go ahead and download the zip file and extract and whatever the file that you are going to write in packer it has to be a json file and now when you are writing you have to divide it into three sections and as you start writing all you have to do is first once you have installed packer say packer validate json and this will tell you whether the you know syntax is fine and you have put the correct content and once it is done just go ahead and say packer build json and what this will do so this is what will try to read the builder section and it will try to create a ec2 machine and inside that using the provisioner section it will run whatever the command or script you have given and convert it into a machine image okay now let's try to do this so 